Hi, my name is Michael Wiley, and this is The Creative Process. Once we have the script and know what the parameters are, like where we're shooting, we talk about deciding on a look. What does a show look like? What does the world look like? Is this funny? Let's make it bright and happy. Is it dire and sad? Let's go dark and brooding. Do we want to trick you that everything's fine? Nostalgia. Deciding the look is important these days because there are so many shows and you can't just rely on really good acting or really good writing or a combination of both of them. We need to set ourselves apart from other shows. You have to rely on what the show looks like, how great it looks, and also how it's marketed and who gets to see it and who gets excited about it and how this buzz is made. A really good example of this is The Twilight Zone because we were making a new version of this really time-tested show. You have to use the same music. You have to use the same intro. You have to have a similar feeling because it's part of the show. We needed to come up with an idea that would set the show apart, most importantly, but also because it's an anthology series, we wanted to make sure that all the episodes had a through line of design and look and feeling so that you knew you're watching the same show from week to week. In a lot of the episodes, you'll see circles. When you start seeing circles in shots, it's sort of like when you enter the Twilight Zone. It's a riff on that swirling thing at the beginning of the Twilight Zone. So we put these circles in to make you know that you're in the zone. And also it did another great thing, which made it feel like a theme for the show. Traditionally in the Twilight Zone, uh, everything's fine and then something happens that's different or weird. So we came up with lots of concepts about, is the Twilight Zone an actual place? What we came up with was this parallel universe idea where lots of different things that we understand as real occur in the same place. So it's almost like timeless. You don't know if you're in the 50s. You don't know if you're in 2020. It's a real mashup of styles and fits really, really well into my sort of eclectic toolbox. There's a, a great episode where they're in a spacecraft flying to Mars. Obviously, that's slightly futuristic, but then we added analog gauges to the spacecraft. We made things look like they could be old-fashioned to feel nostalgic. What they did in the mid-50s and 60s with that show is a version of the same thing that we're doing. You know, the very famous... William Shatner on the airplane with the guy in the wing episode. You'll see, if you watch it really closely, that that airplane never existed in real life. They didn't build planes that had curtains and rec room paneling. So the old-fashioned Twilight Zone manipulated people on television just as much as we did. They wanted William Shatner to feel safe, so they gave him this very safe environment that we all recognize as a safe environment. So the tricks haven't haven't changed that much at all. Well, I worked on a, a TV show called Legion, and the guy who created the show, Noah Hawley, who's also responsible for the really great TV make of Fargo, he said, I don't want this to be an information delivery device. This is not a documentary. What we wanted to deliver was a lot of feeling to the audience. Making a person feel something about what they're watching is art. I always think in the back of my mind, how do we, in this scene or in this set or in this series of sets, how do we deliver feeling? It's more manipulation. I want you to feel this. Sometimes I want you to feel the opposite of what the scene's about, to add a layer of confusion, like you would in a normal conversation with somebody, be slightly confused about what they mean. We want to make you feel that maybe you got some part of it wrong or 
we don't know everything. There's a scene in Legion where the main character has been pursued for his entire life by this really bad person that lives either in his mind or in the real world or somewhere. And what we did was we put him in a beautiful hotel overlooking the sea, beautiful white curtains flowing in, and all the furniture was white. It was almost like a dream. And then we found an actor who's like seven feet tall and put him in a fat suit and made him really terrifying looking. The guy actually comes into the room and chases him around this beautiful room. It's the best example I can think of, of being manipulated into being really scared. There's a couple of really great historical ones. The terrible movie Exorcist 3. There's a scene that plays out in a hospital hallway and out of the most mundane setting that you can imagine. There's a high camera angle. It almost looks like a security camera. And there's a junction of hallways. And the camera lingers up in this hallway. It's like interminable. It seems like minutes and minutes and there'll be a nurse that'll pass and then a doctor will pass and then nothing will happen. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this thing covered with a sheet flies down the hallway with these giant stainless steel loppers behind this nurse and is going to cut her head off. It's absolutely terrifying and it comes out of nowhere. And the other one is in Carrie. It's supposed to be this beautiful prom, right? And the pig's blood flows down and all this happens at a prom. These are really good examples of opposites happening to manipulate you. We don't always have to be super clever. Scary things are scary. Happy things are happy. Showing some waves crashing on a beach will emote pretty much the same thing from everybody. So we can use all these different artistic tools. Painters through the ages have learned how to manipulate people's emotions. We're just doing the exact same thing.